the new light the watch been spoken now now and the trumpets are blowing and i can hear the knock knock knockings ooh, ooh, ooh. the knock knock knockings on my bedroom door Oh my God, oh my God. Costa Ojuang to the world. Mm -hmm. You are so amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Guys, welcome to VIP Access, where I bring you the real superstars in their most raw element. This is Costa Ojuang, and it's such an honor for me to actually sit down and talk to you. I love your music. You represent uh, my heritage, you know, Luo culture, not just Luo, but Kenyan, African, and you're just such an artist. Look at you. Thanks, How are thanks. you? Um, I turned it down today. I wore <laughs> my this is corporate, turning it down. corporate outfit. <laughs> I love it. I love Sante, it. You Sante, look Sante. really amazing. Much cool. Congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. You just released your second album. Tell us about this album. Um, Fuen is a Luo word that translates to revelations in the spiritual context. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I had a first album, Tales of the Fisherman, and then I felt the need to settle in a space, musically and sound-wise. And then, because I, I don't see myself as just another musician. Mm. So um, I'm a storyteller who is trying to document and store history. So in doing so, I'm bringing back sounds from when I was young and some sounds that were there even before I was born and trying to give them a modern and uptown feel because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm singing for my age mates who did not get the privilege and the opportunity to grow up in the village. And by not having that, they missed out on a few things that I feel like I gained on. When, when I was young, I didn't realize I was gaining on anything. Actually, I wished I grew up in the town. But then later on, I realized that it played a huge part in shaping me as a human being and primarily as an African. So when you're sitting in that space where I'm this person who's singing about Luo folk songs and spiritual ly lyrics and melodies and giving them an up uptown sound. Fantastic. So I wanted to ask mm -hmm. about your upbringing. Mm -hmm. Where did you actually grow up? Um, I grew up in a small village in Migori County mm -hmm. called Andingo. And called? Andingo. Andingo. Yeah. Andingo Manoko is in... Kawinjo. Sorry. Anyiko is speaking French. <laughs> <laughs> Andingo is a small village in Awendo. Okay. Really I know Awendo, yes. Yeah. So that's like the last stage. Okay. Nashukabo. Okay. So I, um, I lived there between, like pretty much my entire childhood, did my primary school there. Mm. And then I went to St. Mary's Yala. So that was like four hours, five hours drive mm -hmm. from home to school. And then me, I was on holidays. So I never went there to study. I had a good time. <laughs> then that meant I failed miserably in my exams. Yes, yeah, so I think that 
I think I was just an artist when I was younger, so mm. I didn't really pay much attention to, to the books. To the books when it but mattered. To arts and crafts. Mm. Okay. You actually come from a background of um uh you're a visual artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a painter, quite established in your own right. <laughs> How did you know that I also want to sing and I'm also a musician? Or did the painting work inspire you to make sounds? Um, as a young child, I never knew there was a career as visual art because of where I was coming from, like where I was raised up. But I knew there was music because we would listen to music. Like in, in with all that knowledge, it wasn't that career anyone would choose deliberately to, mm. to pursue. So I wanted to be a doctor. Hey, Dr. Costa. <laughs> so when that didn't <laughs> when that didn't happen, my sister-in-law, because I was this close to going for a medical course, and then she advised me to take a course that was more history-based and art-based. Mm. But the school was not offering that. So I went outside. And then my friends who were already painters in Kisumu directed me to an art school. That's how I started studying art. In Kisumu? Yeah, in Kisumu. Okay. Mongaz Art School. Shout out to Mongaz Art School. Fantastic. And this was a great experience for you? Yeah, they did a good job. Um, it helped because we had, we had supplies ranging from books, especially. And then we had mater art materials like canvases, paints, mm. brushes because it was sponsored by Mill Hill missionaries. Mm. So they would come to Kenya, they would have volunteers from across Europe. So I think that helped a lot because you were exposed to different styles of yeah. work and then like a wide array of artists. Okay, right? yeah. but, you, but you must have found yourself um, experimenting with art from an earlier age, mm -hmm. even in high school. Yeah. Okay. I so did people two. in high school used to tell you like, oh, you're such a cool artist or what are you going to do with this? I, most of them didn't know that there was a career like that. But I was a high school celebrity. I, I would design envelopes for girls' schools. I'd spray a little perfume in there with the letters. <laughs> and that was my <laughs> and job. And people would pay you for yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a quarter loaf. A quarter loaf was six bob. So, but that was really good because if you have like four quarters, you have one full loaf. <laughs> you rich man. Eh, hasla mwenyewe. Eh, manyo pesa. Manyo pesa. Eh, sana. Sana, sana. So um, that went on like that. And then when I came out of high school, I played a bit of football, which didn't work out. I've tried a few things. And then I landed uh, on the art. So I came to Nairobi after art school in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I've been here ever since. There's also a huge element of luck because these both careers are not very easy to maneuver. So I had applied for a competition here. I lied. Guys, don't change the thing I want. I want something. Don't change those things. So I lied I was from Nairobi. I was not from Nairobi. They allowed me. Also, um, you lied that you're from Nairobi to get yeah. into this competition. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they accepted my pieces. And then I was number two at the time. So this was my first time coming back from Nairobi after my first stint. And then there was like newspaper people, like Daily, Daily Nation, mm. Business Daily, Margareta was there. Mm -hmm. And then, so the following day I was on papers and stuff. They paid me 30K and they sold the piece for 45,000. So I went back to Kisumu with 70 something. Mm -hmm. Costa went and packed everything I had and came back to Nairobi. <laughs> You're like, now I'm staying in Nairobi. Nah, I'm not staying I'm here, here to manio pesa. I'm going back. Nice. So I came back immediately and I've, I've been, well, I've never like gone back to leave, but I've been going back to visit. Okay. So, you know, jumping over from the um, painting work to music, when did you make that transition? Because your debut album, um, the first album, Tales of the Fisherman, came mm. out in 20... 21. 21, yeah. Yeah. That was just like the other day. How was the album received? Did you like the reception from the fans? Um, is that when you started building a relationship with your music fans? Yeah, and I've had an access to a studio for the longest time, from 2014. My That's friend, amazing. Yeah, my friend um, got studio stuff, studio in instruments and machines. 
So, so at least you have a place to record any time. Yeah, at the time, he's in France now. Shout out to Gitonga. So he would call me to sing hooks for rappers. So they'd be like rapping, rapping, rapping. When the, the voices fail them in the hooks, he calls me. Mm. So I'd go sing hooks. And then in doing so, I would also record my own stupid, stupid mm. songs. And then that happened between 2014 up until 2019, 20. And then I started recording my own stuff, but there were like song, wow. songs about Jesus Christ and God, which people call gospel. Mm -hmm. And then I did that for a year. But when I did Uriori, Uriori was a freestyle. It was actually Gitonga's idea that I sing in, in Luo, because I wanted to sing these things in English. So we did Uriori, and then me being a painter has given me the freedom and the luxury of waiting and standing from afar and watching people and learning from their mistakes. I mean, musicians. So then, well, I'll also make mine, but they'll be in a different scope. So, um, because I, I don't just sing to make money now out of it. Like, it's not like if this song doesn't sell, I'm quitting, no. Because I'm a painter. So, um, I, I, I did the Rio Day with no expectations. So when it dropped, one of the things that motivated me to do a whole album mm. was the kind of people it pulled. It pulled mostly musicians whose work I, re I respected a lot and I had hoped to work with them. So people like Cero, Swigga, Mutoria, mm. Max, Max knew I was already singing. So mm. Max was aware of what's happening. And just some other guys, Brandies of, of Nairobi. And then so we decided to do a whole album with the same ease we did a real day with because the worst that could have happened was me failing and I didn't fail. And then came the second album, which mm. just got released um, 2022 in December, I think. Mm. It's doing so well. It's affirmed, um, you know, the fact that you, sh you should be on this path. I think when we spoke last, you mentioned you have a lot of artists who've came out and said, we love, you know, this song, we like mm. this album. How does that make you feel? And how does that influence your next moves? Um, it feels nice when people recognize that you're doing something, especially if you've like invested time and energy and money in a whole album of 17 tracks. Mm. So you'd, you'd need, some, as much as you're doing it for yourself spiritually, you'd need some reaffirmations, you know, if people would say like, it's not really validation, but it gives you that drive to keep going. One, two, um, moving forward, I just want to do music with people who I feel are of similar energy and are at least moving towards the same direction. I'm not saying that I know everything about music. It's for, I'm, I'm very literate musically, but I'm lucky enough to have this gift of, of music that is in a different, so it has a different feeling. Mm. So people would want to work with that. It's not like, it's not, it's not because I'm the best singer around or the smartest musician around or the most seasoned one, but there's just a thing about it. And I, I'll, I'll try and keep it as, as true and find people who also vibrate similarly with myself mm. and work with them. There's a few around. So hopefully, they'll see value in what I'm doing and be willing to also be on the ship. Fantastic. Your album features Watenda Willy. Yeah. I think you have a song with Cero. Uh, you have another song with um, Okelo Max, mm -hmm. such a legendary artist and producer. Did this album give you an opportunity to work with all the artists who you are looking up to and wanted to work with them? Are you happy with what you guys did, are you going to have more videos with this artist? And how do you feel about the next phase of promoting this album? Um, we're going to have more videos. We have a group of creatives. So we have a videographer who is part of the team. And he's also the, the, the director of the, the videos. It's dope. Mm, he's very gifted. Vaughn is too much. So and then we have producers who are also part of this whole thing. So Wodomolo is part of it. Mm. Mm, shout out, big man, best man, and then Siepna Gitonga Mukira, who, in a way, directed my music um, journey. Nice. So, 
Me, I'm just enjoying the ride and I try and be as grateful as as possible to the the moments and the small, small wins mm. here and there. And then also acknowledge their presence because I don't think um, the growth I have had the the past few few days would have happened had I not worked with them because I can't produce to save my life. And then the energy that every other every, every other musician brought to the album, I couldn't have had that within myself, regardless of how good I am. So we'll be doing more videos and then with the hopes of working with other musicians. I'm not pro dropping any album yet mm. soon. I mean, you just dropped an album. Yeah, like, <laughs> I hope no one is asking year. you for another album already. I don't want to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we might drop singles later on in the year, but mm. not now. So we'll be just releasing the videos of the okay. album. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So where you want to go with your career in music? You know, you're keeping it 100%. You say you want to keep it true and authentic as much as you can. Um, and not just deliver authentic sounds, but tell these um, stories of your heritage or of the culture of where you come from, you know, your inspiration of how you grew up. Where do you want to go with this? Um, so, because I'm doubling up as a visual artist, clearly I have a picture of what me making it look like. And everybody have their own definitions of success. Um, and with all that said, I'd love to, to, to have as many as possible people listening to this music okay. and, and feeling it um, within themselves the same way I, I vibe to it. Yeah. But then also, um, that might not happen. It's just how life works. Most yeah. things we plan, some don't happen, some, some happen. Yeah. So me, I'll try and, and, and do what I've been doing all this while because it's, it's not about, for me personally, I'm, I'm not doing music because I've, like I've learned it and now I want to I wanna do it like as from the books. Mm -hmm. I'm just singing off energy and, and, stay, and staying cl as close to the source as possible. Mm -hmm. So as long as I feel that, I feel like I've, I've done that, I'm, I'm satisfied. But also, I also want this thing to bring some money because a starving artist is not productive. I, I believe so. So I'd want to also have the freedom of, of creation mm. without having to worry about bills. You're, like you're performing and playing quite a lot, or I would say consistently now, mm. especially after the new album. Is it making sense for you? Like for the concerts, do you at least make um, something good at the end of the concerts? People are paying to come see you, right? Yeah, people are paying, but then also, there's no very many gigs in Nairobi. Um, the musicians who perform, like you can count them, I'm sure you know them. And most of the people who will be listening to this podcast, I'm sure they also know them. So I'm performing constantly because I, the kind of music that I do needs me to perform. And just other than that, I feel like I can't sing like this and then, like I can't, I can't sing this kind of sounds and then fail to give people a live experience. Because then that's, the, that's where the value is yeah. Yeah, of these songs. So I'll, some of them are investments for future. Some of them don't bring me money. Some bring some money, but it, no love lost. So you're saying there's not enough gigs in Nairobi? Is that what I said? Yeah, you said that. You said, I, the, and, and the gigs that are there, almost the same artists performing. Yeah, so I, I, said, I said, the people who perform, you can count them. Mm. I'm not sure if there's not enough gigs because I've been performing. So there are enough gigs. Yeah, gigs are there. But my point is not so many people perform because I'm, I'm sure Nairobi has like about maybe 500 uh, yeah. musicians. And the ones who perform are maybe 40. Okay. 40, 50. But that's good for you. It's a good problem for you, no? Yeah, it's a good problem for me. Mm, it's, it's a good problem. Or are you encouraging the other artists to get more into performances? Performing is expensive. So... I'd love to see more people perform, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a thing you can't force on people because yeah. it's, it's, it's expensive. You have to like... And it's maybe also not for all the artists. There are certain artists who are cut out to perform. Yeah, yeah. Some are better recording artists. And when you actually see them performing, you're like, I didn't mm. enjoy that performance. But your kind of music is like the performance type of 
it's like live music mm-hmm. experience. So I understand. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if if your music suits performing, it would be nice if you give people live experience. Mm. But if it doesn't, just stick to what your sound mm. needs. Okay. So as as an artist who's up and coming, mm. now you have two albums out, you're now performing consistently. What more support do you feel you need? Or how better can our industry um, have a structure, at least in this year, f- to suit you and other similar artists like you are? Like, what are some of the changes we might need to make? Or if not changes, what do you also feel is working t- for your benefit? I think you already mentioned the fact that there are a lot of um, opportunities is good for you. What else is working for you or you feel should be improved? Um, personally, I, I don't have a huge knowledge of how the, the music scene. I understand visual art mm. a lot better because I've been there for the past eight years. Nice. Um, music and performing art, I don't really understand much. I'm still very naive to a lot of issues. Mm. What I know is making music and, and singing and performing. And, um, and I've been doing that for the past two years. So I take this thing as, as the days goes. So when there's an issue, I sort it out with whoever is in charge. But then um, for the fans, I'd hope that the number that comes to gigs improve. Okay. So it's not really towards players, it's towards the, the people who are listening to the music. Mm. So most people need to start going to gigs because it, it's, it's a different feeling. Mm. The fans should just show up. Well, they they need to show up more. Not just on social media, but like nah, out there. Yeah, yeah. When you say I have a performance. And then if you look at it, it's not like it's, it's not like an arm and a leg. Because a gig of one thousand, how how many days do you spend a thousand on yourself? It's a day. Mm. It might not even be enough, depending on what you're buying on that day. So it's not like you're gonna be hungry for a whole week if you go to a music gig. Mm. But then the experience is for a lifetime. Uh, so I'd I'd. I'd I'd ask people to go to more gigs, more live gigs. Fantastic. Are you very close to your family? Um, did you have your mom and dad growing up? Did they support you? Um, no, my mom passed when I was in class, or class one. And then my dad passed three years later. And then we lived with a grandmother who passed a year later. And then I was raised by my brothers. Um, we're close enough, I think mm. so. We are as close as it should be. And they didn't support it. Well, they, the, they, the they music did support side, or did no, they not? Didn't, they did not support it. The music side is now, like I was a creative from a very young age. But they didn't support the no, fact no, no, that no, you no. are creative. No, because I was a bright child. At high school, I was on holidays. I was not studying. So I was a bright child and they had hopes of Dr. That, Costa, that one person I? being in the family, Dr. Costa, um, do, the doctor's brother. Have they changed their minds now? Yeah, because, so like I was saying, music I started last year, but I've been a, a painter for a while. And with the painting, they started changing their minds when they started receiving M-Pesa. So they're like, as long as, as long as it's not killing somebody in Nairobi, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> and your artwork is hanging <laughs> in famous places like at the Norfolk Hotel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where um, else do you have your artwork hanging? Are you trying to have me robbed on my way back home? No. <laughs> um, sorry. No, we're just trying to celebrate you. Like, it's really amazing when you see some artwork hanging somewhere and then you know which artist is behind them. So let us know so that anyone listening or watching can actually identify next time they're somewhere that, they, oh, that's Costa's work. Okay. So I've done a few shows. I've, I've done exhibitions in the museum at the Norfolk. Um, the Talisman, Current Country Club. I have a show right now at the Westgate Coffee Shop, the Art Cafe in Westgate, and the Art Cafe in Lavington. And then... You mean you have an exhibition? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And then there's a, there's a shop in, in Lower Kabete. It's called Provisions Kenya. Mm. And then I've, I've also done shows in, in the US, two shows, one in Michigan, another one in Massachusetts. Fantastic. Look at you. Australian show. It's just some other... I have a piece of, um, I did a portrait for John John, it's her 100th birthday, so I'm sure that's hanging in his house. For Cha- George? Charles Njonjo. Charles Njonjo, oh yeah. fantastic. 
and then just random people around. And as a painter, what's your forte? Like, what's what? What are you best at? What's your style like? Describe I'm a contemporary for us. impressionist. Mm -hmm. Most people know me for landscapes because I spent a long time documenting Kenya, and so I had an issue in art school. We had books from from UK, US, Italy. And they had a wide gray scale, like those snows, dead trees, old train stations, mm. cathedrals. Mm. And I never saw those things growing up. So I, I didn't really identify with them. I, I liked the, the technical side of, of how they were done, but I, I didn't feel like they represent me as a Kenyan who has never seen snow. Yeah. Has never had, um, is it autumn? Yes. When the trees stand. Yes, forever. yes. I've never seen those things. So I took it upon myself to paint Kenya. So I've been doing my small personal inland traveling. So I'm just roaming around Kenya and documenting spaces and sketching them and taking pictures and then coming back to the studio and reproducing them into bigger works. Fantastic. Yeah. Maybe one day they could become, they could make it into a book and it could be a nice coffee book. I hope so. Yeah, that would be nice. Thank you so much, Costa awesome. Ojuang. It's been such an honor to speak with you here Thank on you. my podcast, VIP Access. I wish you well in your career and everything you do. Uh, maybe any last message you want to tell to your fans who are listening, who have been supporting you um, from the painting days to now the music and on, uh, in everything that you're doubling in, they're still down with you. What do you want to tell them? Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for... Am I supposed to be looking at the camera? Yes. Oh, so I want to say thank you. You can also look at for, me if you want. I, I like this view. <laughs> <laughs> no, look at the fans. <laughs> Let's be respectful to the fans. <laughs> I want to say thank you for supporting and con consistently and persistently following my work. One, two. Um, those who have known me as a painter for the longest time, don't be scared and surprised because the music I make sounds like the work you've been seeing. And then thirdly, Come to the live gigs. It is a better experience. And then follow me on social media platforms. I'm on Instagram as Costa underscore music. And I have my old painting page as Costa Ojuang. Any other place I'm Costa Ojuang. Twitter, you, um, YouTube, and Facebook. Thank you so much. Asanteni. Sana, sana, sana. Thank you so much, Costa. Thank you, everybody watching or listening. This has been VIP Access with the amazing Costa Ojuang. Mm. I'll be back next week with yet another amazing artist to take you behind the scenes of how they make their beautiful art, music, work, or projects. And um, yeah, maybe we could have a song, a little song. Do you want to play me something? A song? Yeah. Could you play Manyo Pesa or that's too pop? But you haven't paid me. See, my is about getting the money. You didn't pay. You actually paid me. <laughs> 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 I'm his yeah, publicist, guys. Usi atamani ya mwenzio Kazi ni kazi Kazi ni kazi Usi jilinganishe na mwenzio Tunza hiyo yako Tunza ulicho na choe Obongo nyaka laga no laga gigita Jadolo no nena kakwecho Jango madonge tinda chiemo to banjo loro chalo pikuja Fimbo ya bali ya iu winyoka Shika ulicho nacho Jika kamue Jika kamue Fimbo ya bali ya iu winyoka Shika ulicho nacho Wow, wow, wow No jika kamue Jika kamue Manyo pesa mano kela Nairobi Manyo pesa mano kela Nairobi Mwanu mausonge kao gigoi Kao gigoi Manyo pesa mano kela Nairobi Manyo pesa mano kela Nairobi Mwanu mausonge kao gigoi Kao gigoi 
Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Wow, wow.